In this test, we tension the selectivity super jump line on three different distances 10, 20, and 30 meters. The pre tension was set on 8 kN, as this is quite a typical jump line tension. Then I tried to make a butt bounce in the middle of the line. I always tried to make it as similar as I could, as far as this is possible on such different lengths. And here extremely interesting results came out. In the 10 meter slack line, there was a huge increase of the force in the slack line. It went up by 4.9 kN. In the 30 meter line, there was only an increase of 2.1 kN. That is not even half of the increase. The reason is, that on longer slack lines there is more ribbon that can absorb the shock and that will be stretched. On short lines the increased force is more directly conducted to the anchor points. Due to the longer distance the slack line will also be bent through more. This means it takes more time to make the whole butt bounce. From the moment to touch the line to the moment to leave it again it takes about twice as long on the 30 meter line compared to the 10 meter one. So the whole energy is distributed on a bigger time, which also decreases the force. A very important thing for the body here is that as it takes twice as long to make the butt bounce, also the force acting on the body is divided by two on the longer slack line. So we recommend not to make a jump line session on extremely short slack lines, as it is some big stress for the human spine if accelerated too abruptly. Rather take your time and train on 20 meter plus slack line. It also looks a lot more relaxed and not so hectic in the end. And personally, I also think it is a lot more fun to jump on long slack lines. We also conducted the same force test just for static load. I simply let myself hang in the middle of each slack line. And here we can see that the distance of the slack line is not of great importance anymore to the increase of force.